Welcome back to the channel where we cover everything no code, tech, AI, and marketing. Today, I'm super excited to show you Ferola, which is a WYSIWYG text editor you can build right into your application. It's a low code solution that you can implement into any development framework with just a few lines of code. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to put Ferola into a Rails application and then get started with their editor in just a few minutes. You'll be able to build things like a support ticket collector, a content submission form. You could build full websites, export to code. You can allow comments and reviews, build user-generated content, themes and templates, e-commerce sites, content marketing, and so much more, including email marketing. If you like this type of video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other videos like this one. And if you have any questions about this video or how we did this, please drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. We've landed at forall.com today. Super excited to show you this tool. It's a what is what you get HTML editor. And there's a ton of different use cases that you could apply using this application. So you could build internal tools for your website. This could be like designing web pages, designing emails, learning management systems. You could connect it to your CMS for an enhanced editing experience. You could build custom plugins. You could work it with e-commerce sites to write product descriptions and reviews. You could use it for content marketing and collaborative content marketing. There's so many different ideas here for internal. And for external, you could use Forala for user-generated content, such as comments and reviews, forms and discussions, social media integration. You could build interactive forms, surveys and polls. You could use this for article submission to your blog, support tickets, guest blogging, and so much more. Really, the possibilities are endless. They do have complete documentation, a bunch of different plugins that you can implement, and tons of examples if you need some inspiration. What I really like about Frolla is it's a low code solution. So comparatively to building something like this from scratch so that your internal or external users can have a rich editing experience, this saves you a ton of time with just a few lines of code and then you can extend it beyond that if you would like. Speaking of code, Frolla is really able to work with your existing tech stack, whatever that might be. So whether it's JavaScript, WordPress, React, Rails, or any other framework, it's easy to get up and running with Ferrolo right away with just a few lines of code. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today with a simple Rails application. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to that and show you how I installed this in my Rails application and then show you how it all works. Super excited to get there, it'll just take a few minutes. So over here, this is their documentation for Rails. So what I've done is I've created just a basic Rails app. So this Rails app doesn't really have anything to it except an index page. So this is just our home page. You can see I put some code here, which was given to me by Ferala. I've also changed the routes to route to the index page, but that's all I've done. Aside from that, this is a basic Rails application. If you're familiar with Rails, this will look familiar to you. Or if you're using a different framework, the steps are very much the same. So if we come back to this page here, the first thing that we need to do is install the gem WYSIWYG dash rail. So that's super easy. We just went over to our gem file here. As you can see, we added the gem WYSIWYG dash rails. Okay, great. Once you do that, you need to actually install this gem into your app. So you simply just run the command in your terminal bundle install. If I go over to my terminal here, I've already done this, but I'll show you how this works. So we need to go to our desktop that's where our application lives. And then I have it in a folder called go. So CD go. And then within the go folder, I can write bundle install. And it looks like 99 gems were installed. 17 gem dependencies. Now, if we just had added this gem for the first time, it would actually install this gem, but we've already done that. So we can go ahead and move on a couple other things in our application.css.scs file we need to add these imports. So I've done that here. We can just check that out. Application.css, here are the imports, great. In the JavaScript file, we need to add this line of code, require for all editor.min.js. So let's take a look. Application.javascript, there it is. Require for all editor.min.js. And now also in the JavaScript file, we wanna have all of these plugins, which we've done. We can go ahead and see that here. And we also wanna import all of these into the CSS file, which I've done. So if we go back to the CSS file, 
you can see all of these are here. Okay, so I've done everything that I need according to their instructions. So the only other thing that's left to do is come down here and we go to the getting started to initialize the editor, getting started guide, interactive tutorial. So there's all kinds of things here. So basically full initialization code example, and here is the code. So I've just taken this code and I've come to my index.html.erb file and I've dropped this code here. So we should hopefully be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hop back to my terminal and I am in my MacBook and I'm in the Go folder. So in Rails, the way that you start your local server is you just type Rails space S, hit enter, and this is gonna actually boot up our server. Of course, you have to have Rails installed on your computer and you have to have created your initial application, which is easy to do. You can find documentation on how to build your first application. So, okay, it looks like it's up and running on our local host 3000. So let's head over here to localhost 3000 and check this out. Our application is running and we have the Ferola editor running and working within our application, which is this rich text editor that they provide, which is super nice. We're gonna show you how to use it. And this is a live working app running locally on our machine, which is super, super cool. I'm gonna show you some of the features here that make it super easy right out of the box to start creating rich content. And you can even generate the HTML for that. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can just imagine this is like a place on your website where somebody can submit a support ticket and you need to be able to allow them to add rich text, upload files, that kind of thing. I'll show you how you do it here. So we can just say bold. We could say, I am having trouble with my Mac. Okay, cool. Let's just say they wanna upload an image. We can actually just use this, upload an image. There we go. We can format the image. We can change the size, 600 pixels. There we go. It's looking much better. We can align it left. As you can see, it's very easy to start to build out things within the Ferola editor. And the use cases here range widely, but I'm just giving the example of a support ticket and how you can extend some rich text functionality to your employees submitting support tickets. There's other things like files. So you can attach different files here. If we wanted to include a screenshot or like this index file, we can certainly upload that. And we'll go into some of the other features because I'll show you how you can build out maybe like a landing page for a website as well. But I just wanted to show you here what this would look like in terms of submitting a support ticket. Now, something that's really cool is there's also this option to add more rich items like video, tables, emoticons, special characters and symbols. Again, files, horizontal line rule. So we can see that there. There's a lot that you can add, but if we navigate over here to the right and we hit more miscellaneous, we can actually see some interesting things. So we can see a full screen option, a print option, download as a PDF, select all and code view. So let's go ahead and hit code view and check this out. We are actually given the source code for what we've just built. So we could actually, if we were building a website, we could actually just take this code. We could head back to our sublime text we could paste it down here and then we would have our application for our code. Remember, if you have any image assets, you'd have to load those into the assets folder of your application, but otherwise everything would work. Let's head back here. We'll get out of the code view and we can just delete everything that we created here. So now let's give another example of building a website. So let's go ahead and say, this is a website for Noco devs. We'll say, welcome to no code devs. We can go ahead and bold this. If you click over the more text options, there's tons of options here. You can change the formatting. You can change the font family. Let's go ahead and make this Fernanda. Let's make the font size 96. We can change the text color if we want to blue, which is super cool. We can have different classes. Let's go ahead and center this. That's looking really good. Let's pretend like we need a hero image here. We'll just use the same demo image we used before. It's gonna load up the image, pull out that space. We'll change the size. Let's just say the width here is 900. Okay, that's looking really good. This is super basic, but I'm trying to give you the idea. Now that we're in the image itself, check this out. We can adjust the style. We can give it like rounded edges. We can do bordered, we can do a shadow. Let's go ahead and give this rounded edges. 
that's looking really nice. We can change the display. We can write a image caption. We can link the image and so on and so forth, as well as add alt text. Now let's just say on our homepage, we also wanted to add a table. We'll just go ahead and space down. And then we can go to this more rich option and choose table. And we can actually choose our table size right here. So let's just say we needed a four by two table. We could have our table heading, heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on, heading four. Okay, and we can actually just come in here. We can bold these headings and so on. So there's really a lot that you can do with tables and allowing users to interact with tables. Just trying to give some examples. We can actually add emoji if we want. Okay, here we go. So let's just say we wanted to add a heart emoji. Welcome to the devs. There we go. We can easily do that. Maybe want a line break here. We can add the line break. So this is their out of the box editor. There's obviously a lot more plugins that you can implement into this editor. If we head over to their site, and we go to Frolla, we go to features. We can just take a look at some of the features that they have here. So just a couple things to go over. There's different themes, SVG icons, full screen, custom toolbar, pop-up, sticky toolbar, full page. It's lightweight, it's plugin based, HTML5, CSS3, super nice. It's optimized for mobile, Android, iOS, video resize, responsive design, generates clean code, good for SEO. Tons of different formatting options, which you saw, a ton of rich content. You can do file uploads, all kinds of different things. Now in the developer world, there's an API, there's of course rich documentation, all kinds of different frameworks, which we looked at earlier. And there's just a ton that you can do. If we take a look down here, we can take a look at some of the different design blocks that they have as well. And you can implement these into your editor. So. These could be content blocks, like images with testimonials. These could be different features. They have footers, they have forms, they have headers. Now these aren't in this editor that we're running on the local host by default, but you can easily come into, let's find these design blocks. Let's say we want a pricing block. We can click into this and then grab the code here for this pricing block. So they have all of this. And if there's any other installation instructions, they will provide it for you. But they have all of this provided for us as well as plugins that add additional functionality besides design blocks. So coming back to our local host, let's go ahead to build out a little bit more of a site here. Let's take a look at the code. So let's click this three dots up at the top right again click the code view and check this out. We get really nice, clean outputted code that has our sort of header section with our emoji hosted on Cloudflare. We have the table with the different table rows with the headings and the titles as well as the table column. So all of the code is here. We could simply just copy and paste this if we were building a website or like a newsletter or something like that and get the HTML right out of this editor here. So. That's it. In just about 15 minutes, we were able to install basic Rails app, add the code snippets to our applications and get our editor up and running on a local host. Of course, we could push this production if we wanted, push it out to GitHub and have it live on the web. We're just doing everything locally here, but super easy to use, super impressed with how powerful Forola editor is. I encourage you to give it a try. It's free to play around with. You could build a website editor. You could build a newsletter editor, content, submission forms, tools for your website, internal tooling, all kinds of different things. Super excited about this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of their videos like this one. Thank you so much and have a good day.